Hey everybody. You know, anybody that's known me for any little bit of amount of time knows that I hate wasting food and that I really like beets. And you probably, if you've had an opportunity to watch some of my videos, you'll see that I enjoy dehydrating food as well. Try to turn the camera a little bit, but I wanted to get a little bit of dehydrating done this evening. I'm sorry that my light exposure is kind of off and weird today, but I want to get some dehydrating done. I don't know if you've been watching what's going on in the stores, but there's a lot of people that are saying if you go to the store and you see something that you really enjoy eating, you might want to get it now because there's a lot of shortages in different places. Um, these are just beets because I love beets. But I usually just buy uh, a bag or two of fresh beets per week and then that way I can cook them down and I'll blend some and make some into a beet beverage that I can drink during the day. Especially, you know, I can blend in uh, a baked apple or whatever with it and it gives it a nice kick. Or I can just drink it straight, whichever way. And sometimes I'll just eat the beets. Uh, I don't always candy the beet. In fact, I rarely would candy the beets. Um, I, I don't pickle the beets. I just enjoy the good flavor of the beets. And since the beets have helped me um, on my health journey by lowering my blood pressure, um, giving me more energy and vitality through the day um, and being so good for me to the point where my doctor said that if you like eating beets, you need to keep eating beets because your health is turned all the way around from eating beets. Now, of course, nothing that I'm saying here right now should be taken as medical advice because I am not a medical doctor, but I do enjoy beets, but what I'm going to do with these beets today, I'm going to put them on the dehydrator and let them dry out over the next day or day and a half. The thinner they are, the quicker and easier it is for them to dehydrate. And I'll just put them on the tray so that there is plenty of space between all of them and have all the venting stations open on my dehydrator. And I have one of those that don't have a fan, so it's just a matter of putting it on there and letting it do its thing. And, you know, you might say, why? Why are you going to do that? Who wants to eat beet chips? But I have no intention on eating beet chips. That, I can guarantee you. But what I do is doing these smaller ones for dehydrating the beets and then turning it into a powder so that I can use it as a smoothie. I can put it in a smoothie or a beverage. Um, I may leave some that are just dehydrated and whole so that in the winter during this winter season, which is kind of longer where I live than it is in some other parts of the country, I can bring it back by, you know, rehydrating it and, and preparing it with some water. It will be brought back or can be brought back. What I do. This is what I've done for more than 10 years now. And, you know, I've done it with other vegetables. But doing the beet is a real plus because of the health benefits that come with it. Um, carrots. When I first started doing this, I was actually just going to the store and buying dehydrated carrots. But why buy them if I can just buy whole carrots, slice them thinly, put them on my own dehydrator, which is a one-time payment. You know, you pay for it, you have it, 
and then you can do what you need to do. And then you dehydrate them and you put them in a container like this. Then if you want to eat them as cooked carrots in a stew, you just put it in the stew. Especially if you have something like a multi-pot or an instapot or a crock pot. It works very well. And when you cook them down, they do come right back to shape and to the shape and size they were before, before they were drying. And it tastes good, in my opinion. And like, this is a container of greens. I like to eat greens. Oftentimes, I would just dehydrate them. I'll wash them, cut them into small pieces, put them on the dehydrator, and let it dry out. And then when I want it, I may throw it in some soups or stews or make a vegetable lasagna or something and add that in. And it'll soak up those juices that are there with the other products that are in there or the stewed tomato or whatever. And it will come back nicely. But when I started putting kale and collard greens in the food processor, it makes it like a spice that you can just sprinkle over your food, you're getting that added benefit of the nutrition and you're just sprinkling it right on top of your scrambled eggs or right in with your soup or if you're doing black eyed peas or whatever. There's your collard greens. There's your kale greens. And it's a lot easier to eat the kale for me this way than the other way because kale can be kind of challenging. onions. I love to do the onions this way because I can do a couple of sacks of onions and it will last me six months. It will last me a long time this way. Much longer and less waste this way than the other way. Just eating it fresh, which I will leave like one or two fresh, but I prefer to do my onions this way, even though my neighbors might not enjoy the smell for the first 24 hours. After that, when it's totally dried out, you know, the odor dissipates and and you have this goodness for the whole winter. This is garlic. I'm kind of running low on that, but I'm growing some garlic bulbs uh, in the other room. But those are some things that are a benefit for having a food dehydrator. And like I said, thin slices go a long way. Let it dry out. Either find a good container to put it in just like that. But I will, I plan on putting these in the food processor and grinding it down just like you would coffee beans so that whenever I'm ready to use it, I can scoop it and go. I can make whatever kind of smoothie or whatever kind of meal that I want. I hope that this may help you, give you some ideas of some things that you can do with the food processor. And I'll do an up, update video on how this is going and how everything dries out so we can take that on to step two. So thanks for joining me in my kitchen and have a good night.